So welcome to the Mersey Tobiotic Research Institute. My name is Amanda Lavers. I work here as the executive director. I grew up in, I'm Nova Scotian, I grew up in Truro and I moved here to study songbirds in 1997. This is our field station you can see in the background uh, where we have researchers come from all over Nova Scotia and right across Canada, sometimes even from other parts of the world, to come and conduct their research uh, right here in southwestern Nova Scotia. So I've been working here since the very beginning. MTRI is now 11 years old. We celebrated our 10 year anniversary last year. We were formed in 2004. I was feeling kind of blue sitting by myself Looking like a dusty book on a forgotten shelf It's feeling a bit lazy It's feeling like I had nothing to do Then you came my way And I felt something new I sat down and talked to Wendy Wynum is the administrative coordinator at MTRI. How long have you worked here? I have worked here, it will be uh, seven years in October. And where are you originally from? I'm originally from Port Mattoon. I asked Wendy to take me through a day in the life at MTRI. Well, it's a pretty busy place. It depends on the time of year, I guess. Um, in the summer it's a lot busier than in the winter. Um, we have a lot of summer students that come in doing their field work. Uh, so I guess I start my day making tea for everybody, <laughs> checking emails and answering phones and doing paperwork. It's just, you know, a lot of office work. Just about every project I'm involved in it in some way. I don't go out and do field work, but uh, you know, I, I'm doing all the, <laughs> all the background work. The background work is right, yeah. So what is your favorite thing at MTRI? Or about MTRI? Uh, I think it's the people. It's a really good bunch of people to work for and work with. Yep, it's like a family here. So in 2010, we decided to renovate our building um, because we needed more space, actually. We're uh, a growing business and attracting lots of people to the area. So in 2010, we decided that we weren't only going to renovate to make more space for ourselves, but also that we wanted to reduce our power bill because we started in 2004 and as we got to be a bigger business, our power bill was growing and growing and growing. Um, so when we did our renovation, we decided to install five new green technologies and to build to LEED standards. So we achieved it and we got gold LEED standard for homes. Um, and you can see that we a uh, wind turbine is one of our green technologies. This is a micro wind turbine. It doesn't produce a lot of power, but it can produce power in the nighttime and it can produce power in the winter, times when our um, solar PV panels aren't producing a lot of electricity. It's also really visible because we're right here on the side of Highway 8, so it attracts people's attention and lets them know that we're doing something different here. Another one of our green technologies is this heating unit, which is called a Can Solar heating unit. It's here on the side of the, our addition. The air is piped through this unit. If you look closely, you can actually see they really are pop cans. This unit is manufactured in Newfoundland, and it's a whole bunch of pop cans that are painted black. Um, and we force air through uh, the unit, and then it blows back into um, our bedroom, which is a place where our researchers can uh, stay overnight. I spent the night on your doorstep with flowers wilting in my hand. So on the roof of our building we have two different kinds of solar collectors. We have at the back evacuated tubes which heat up hot water which is great for us because we have the most people staying here overnight and using showers and using hot water in the summertime and that's when we get the most solar gain. So our solar hot water actually is one of the best green technologies we have and for people um, in their homes it's the best um, 
bang for their buck. So you can actually pay off a solar hot water system in an average house in about 10 years. We also have on our roof here photovoltaic panels which collect the sun's energy in order to um, produce electricity for us. So we feed back to the grid, um, back to Nova Scotia Power, and then they subtract that amount off of our bills every month. With flowers wilting in my hands I spent the night on your doorstep MTRI is a charity-based organization that attracts lots of volunteers to help with as many projects. I spoke to Jeff and Gabrielle, two volunteers working at MTRI. Uh, my name is Jeff Kraft and I'm a volunteer, retired uh, volunteer. I've been around uh, here for five or six years. I arrived here around 7.38 and uh, what, uh, I am um, I await my orders of the day from Wendy or whoever. I do, I work at anything they give me and it's possible to do. This room I help build. I help build a 12 by 12 cabin up on the hill. Um, I planted fruit trees and uh, berry bushes. The logic of, of, uh, of uh, nature, you know, it's, it, it's, Reality, nature is reality, and that's why I like it. With flowers wilting in my hand, I spent the night. My name is Gabrielle Tiroloiselle, and uh, I'm a volunteer at MTRI. And where are you originally from? I'm from Quebec. Uh, it's been two months now, yeah. And I worked on turtles, uh, ribbon snake, and uh, loons. I, I work more with loons, with the loon project, so uh, to verify the color of the bands uh, on uh, almost every lakes at the uh, National Park Kitchen Kujik. Yeah. I'm in love with the theme at MTRI. Everybody is so nice, professional and passionate. So I really appreciate to work with them. And I also like the projects because it's uh, for species at risk. So I really feel uh, happy to help and to do something for species at risk. Yeah. Along with volunteers, MTRI employs several core staff and summer student researchers to coordinate its programs. I asked Tommy, Leah and Jane to tell me a bit more about these programs. I'm Tom Lutz and I'm a forest technician at MTRI. I've been working here for about eight months. I'm working on the uh, our FSC Woodlot Certification Program and uh, with our Old Growth Forest Project. Uh, MTRI helps provide sustainable woodlot management plans uh, through the Forest Stewardship Council in Canada. And uh, essentially what we do is landowners who have private land can get a management plan so they can manage their property sustainably uh, in a way that they can be proud of what they're doing and uh, potentially uh, harvest a little bit of fiber off and maybe make some money but also manage for ecological values. My favorite things about MTRI are definitely working out in the woods and, uh, and outdoors as much as possible and dealing with our community. It's a, it's a vibrant place in the Camp to Caledonia area. And it's, uh, it's really rewarding. There's no one calling out my name And for me it's all the same This is actually my sixth summer in a row. Um, I usually work through the summers and I started when I was in high school and I'm in my third year of university and still working here. I'm actually from just down the road from MTRI, um, I'm from Camp Nova Scotia and um, I've been lucky enough to grow up in the area. When I arrive to work I usually have to water the milkweed plants outside because I am part of the butterfly club and I'm head of the butterfly uh, program this year. Um, so water those and make sure they're healthy, um, weeding them, that kind of thing. And then I uh, usually am updating the database of new members and trying to make connections with people um, across Nova Scotia to get more members involved in the Butterfly Club. So that could be um, emailing, phone calls, radio, TV, that kind of thing. Having grown up here, I was able to see when MTRI first opened 
and it was amazing all the um, outreach programs that they had for the public and uh, it's kind of like the citizen science aspects of it whereas they're just trying to reach out let people know what's going on and uh, it's really fun now that I'm older to be a part of that and to have an opportunity to give that to people who were my age at, or who are my age at that time. Jane Barker and I'm the Forest Stewardship Coordinator for Mersey Tobiatic Research Institute. I mostly work on the Forest Stewardship Council certification project, um, working with private landowners, helping them manage their results sustainably and um, achieve FSC certification. I've also been working for quite a long time now with a group of people to establish um, a community forest in southwest Nova Scotia, which it now exists, it's called the Medway Community Forest Cooperative. I also work on the um, Acadian Forest Hardwood Restoration Project, which looks mainly at red oak regeneration in Kejukujik National Park. I really enjoy working at MTRI. It's um, apart from working with such a, a an interesting range of people, there's a really diverse range of projects, and. Um, just sharing an office with so many people working on so many different projects. So many of them are interlinked and, and related to one another and, and that kind of connectedness but also the diversity makes it a really inspiring and exciting place to work. There's never a dull moment. So this is the Blanding's turtle. It's the turtle we say that has the sun under its chin. This is a model that shows what it looks like. It has a really high dome shell. It's an endangered species in, in Canada. Its Nova Scotia population is endangered and we do a lot of work um, at three locations. MTRI takes the lead for the McGowan population. There's also a population within Kedjimkujik and also in the community of Pleasant River. So we look, work really closely with volunteers who help to protect the Blinding's turtle by following it in June uh, when it comes up on land um, and digs a hole in the ground and lays its eggs, then we put a covering over the nest and then we come back in the fall when the baby turtles are able to hatch up out of the ground um, and then we release them back into the wild. The blinding turtle is um, a species that a lot of people have gotten excited about and it's been sort of our flagship species. We work on a lot of other species at risk as well, a lot of plants, some lichens, um, and also the monarch butterfly. So MTRI has over 600 members and over 50 partner organizations who've all come together to make up a cooperative. MTRI is actually a, it's a charity but it's also a cooperative and we work really closely and collaboratively with our partners whenever we're deciding on a new project um, and whenever we need their advice about um, ongoing work that we're doing. MTRI isn't an advocacy group, we try rather to work really positively on solutions. So for example, um, when we're worried about a species at risk, then we work really hard to recover that species. With the blinding turtles, we spend quite a bit of time and effort with volunteers covering their nests to try to protect them from uh, predators like raccoons that might have artificially high populations. When it comes to forestry, rather than um, advocating against something like clear cutting, we work positively with private landowners to try to um, improve their forest stewardship on their own properties. Um, or when it comes to green technologies, instead of worrying about or complaining about climate change, we try to do something right here on our own. So we walk the talk and provide an example and work positively towards solutions. <laughs>